Friends, fellows, countrymen, what you see here is a virtual amalgamation of the college game day desk if it were to be placed in, in an impossible location above Memorial Stadium. There's just nothing there for that to be resting on, uh, looking at it from that perspective. Here at dusk, a beautiful recreation of a sunset that I think is also impossible because it generally uh, rises actually up between behind the big, the big grandstand on the west side of the field. Starting Adam Barman here, the quarterback of the 06 Jayhawks. Not really, I think, in this season. It was Kerry Meyer who got the first, like, eight games, and then, or first six games, maybe. Todd Reason got the rest of them. Um, but regardless, this is NCAA Football 07 for the Xbox. Uh, a game I didn't really get to play that much as a kid, but my roommate has a copy of it, oddly enough. I ended up playing it on the PS2 quite a lot. This 06 team is not... This is kind of the one that gets forgotten in the memory because they started the season out very poorly, and then they ended the season very strongly, but they didn't ultimately make it to a bowl game. Most people, when they talk about the Mangino era, they're talking about 2007. And if they are me, and me exclusively, they're talking about the 2005 team, which is really good as well. The 06 team kind of gets lost in the shuffle. No bowl game, no winning season. They were the, the one non-winning season between 2005 and 2008. So, But, they, you know, it was a 500 season. So, you know, you take what you can get, and we'll take an interception right there. Uh, I had a lot of time <laughs> in the summer to name all of these players to go through on uh, sportsreference.com slash CFB and find out who all of these guys were. Of course, how could I forget John Cornish, the heavy hitter, the hard hitter running back, a guy who ended up being just incredible in the uh, Canadian Football League, actually. One of the best players. I think it's the Ottawa Red Blacks. I'm not entirely sure uh, in the history of that team. We score there to get a 7-0 lead on the Southeast Missouri State Red Hawks, a team that the Jayhawks have played twice during my collegiate career. Uh, they came in once during my sophomore year in 2014. And uh, they almost won that game. By the way, don't do that math uh, and don't try to find out how long I've been in college because it's not four years. Um, and they almost won that game. I think they ended up, KU won like by eight points. It was a nail biter though at the end. There was a mad comeback by the uh, the Red Hawks in the, uh, the fourth quarter. And pretty much KU probably should have lost that game. Uh, yes, but here there's not that much of a question. Adam Barman putting the shoulder into it, and then John Cornish breaking one tackle, two tackles, and three tackles to get into the end zone for KU to put him up 14-0 in the second quarter after what was a pretty mediocre first quarter. We're heading into this game. I'm hoping that the Jayhawks can get a victory. I'm pretty sure that they will. I mean this on the real field. Uh, Simo's not that good, and I think KU should be improved from last year. They were really, really, uh, you know, kind of painful to watch last year because at points they would do great things like I do here on this kickoff return, or punt return rather, by Brian Murph, one of the guys who uh, created one of my favorite moments of uh, my youth, actually, the 2005 Fort Worth Bowl. He brought back a punt for a touchdown, and that was kind of what cemented the game in the favor of the Jayhawks. Uh, any long-time KU fans might remember that. Uh, but regardless, uh, short-time KU fans, short-term memory KU fans may remember 2016 team. Not good. You know, 2-10 and ten record. Uh, one really great dramatic win at the end of the season over uh, a Texas team that we hadn't beat. And since like World War II or something like that, even though 2004 should have been a win. Um, and, and a team that got really close a number of times, but just couldn't pull it off in a couple of those games. They could have easily been 4-8, and eight, had just a couple of breaks gone the Jayhawks' way. Fortunately, they didn't. In uh, the actual game on the screen here, we get a, a, a kickoff return there, and that you may notice is my second special teams touchdown of the game because this game is ridiculous and has a feature called the third person camera that comes up any special team situation. So field goal block, punt block, punt return, kickoff return, I think even interception returns. And it makes all of those incredibly easy. You score a lot on, uh, from, from special teams if you have a decent return man. So I've played seasons in this game where I've had double digit touchdowns in one season with a return man. As we see here, we get three total in the game. Another from Brian Murph, same way down the left sideline there and a touchdown to make it 42 to 7 with a minute left to go in the second quarter. This game is solid. Uh, I, I do enjoy it 
uh, as I said, my, my previous experience with it was on the PS2. The Xbox version is also just about as good. There's not a significant difference between the two. We go into halftime, 42-14 to 14 lead there, and the second half is not all that interesting because I kind of put in the second team. But here we go into triple option, and Adam Barman just kind of has a weird fumble there, like Jameis Winston in that 2014 Rose Bowl, I think. I don't remember exactly when. Falls over, and the ball just kind of whoop right up in the air and on the ground to do my, uh, my great Chris Berman impression here. The Red Hawks do score here. They got a couple of touchdowns in the second half, but the game was pretty much out of hand there. And I'll take this opportunity to talk about the season that is upcoming. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that there is going to be a turnaround for these Jayhawks. I feel like if there's any year where we start seeing real progress, and I don't mean just progress in terms of how they're playing, I mean progress in terms of how many points are scored per game, uh, you know, the defensive stops, and just quite simply win and loss column differences. That's what that's what needs to happen in order for this season not to be kind of written off because you can kind of see some progress you know we went from zero wins to two wins which isn't a big difference but it was a difference you know we could have gone from zero wins to four wins i still think that like it is ridiculous a couple of the games they lost that year just the bad luck that they had um and going into the 2017 season i'm hoping to see at least one more victory uh, hopefully a Big 12 win. I'm thinking like Texas Tech, West Virginia, somebody like that could be a potential uh, defeat that, that they could get to move into three or four wins. My prediction is still three and nine because I've really forgotten how to be optimistic when it comes to KU football. But I'm hoping, you know, and I'll be there. I'll be watching the whole season. I'll have an official preview coming up on uh, the website with the URL you can find right here. Um, it's, it's just my name followed by the, the, the words .net. And, um, yeah, I'm just excited to keep doing this, too. I found a lot more college football games. I thought I had exhausted the source, but I really didn't look at this era between, like, 2003 and 2007 or 8, really. I uh, didn't look at anything from the Xbox 360, and there's still a couple of the Game Breaker series, and there's a, an NF, uh, NCAA 2K2 for the Dreamcast I didn't even look at. So I got some more places to go with this game, and I'm excited to see it uh, see it happen, you know. And thank you all for watching. I'm really looking forward to doing another season of this. And, uh, you know, rock shock. Um, I hope they get the win this weekend against Southeast Missouri. You can never be too certain. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. <laughs>